Hey everybody, welcome to another video. Today I'm gonna to be discussing colored translucent shadows. Uh, so first thing, I just wanna show you this in action. So here we have a translucent sphere, and as you can see, it's casting a colored translucent shadow. Uh, but in this particular case, you'll find that it's actually a dynamic shadow. You can see that it is occluded by geometry, it casts light. This light does even have a light bounce, although it's in um, screen space only. Uh, and yeah, pretty cool, right? So um, the way that this works, because as you probably know, Unreal doesn't actually have any support for colored translucent shadows um, in dynamic lighting as of right now is that we have to manually capture that data. Um, and in this case, we're doing that with a scene capture component, which will capture the color of our desired translucent object, as well as a depth map for projecting the shadows. And so uh, basically this is similar in concept to what Unreal refers to as inset shadows. That's basically um, the concept of having a custom shadow map for a singular uh, object or a small group of objects. Uh, usually this is to give uh, the, the player character or important hero assets much higher resolution shadows than they would normally have, but it can also be replicated manually to create other types of uh, hero shadows, right? So if you know, you're doing a scene that really demands colored translucency, um, you can emulate that um, by capturing the data yourself and projecting it um, in order to get the result. So uh, the first thing that we're gonna do is just go over here and get some empty space. And we are going to create a, um, let's see, let's create a plane. And I'm just gonna rotate that 90 degrees. And this will be uh, our stained glass window here. So let's go ahead and create a material for it. And we're just gonna set this up like a reference first before we um, proceed with actually creating material. So we're going to go ahead and go to translucent, uh, thin translucent, translucency type needs to be forward shading. We need a um, thin translucent material output. And for now, let's just go ahead and give it basic color. Capacity. Great. So now I've got a basic piece of glass. Let's go ahead and make it two sided. Cool, looks good. So um, if we go ahead and just jump straight into path tracer, you'll see that the path tracer actually does have support for um, colored shadows. And so we can use this as a reference as to what uh, our end look should be like. And let's go ahead and talk about how we can create this look. So, once again, what we are doing is capturing an image of our color and projecting that image into the scene. And so in order to do that, we're gonna need a couple of things. Uh, and we're going to put this in a blueprint. And we're gonna call this BP colored shadow. Let's call this um,
Third glass. Let's open up this blueprint. So in this blueprint, we are going to need a scene capture component. And we are going to need a decal. We're going to name this. Oops. We're going to name that color capture name this projection good enough let's go ahead and grab this throw it into the scene and the first thing that we're going to want to do is put it in the same position as our it's our plane there we go and now let's go ahead and um, go to our color capture and we're going to just give it some uh, distance, let's put it maybe negative 300 for now. And what this is going to give us is basically as our um, camera moves, uh, it will orbit our object that it's capturing, but our projection will stay relevant to the object space. Um, next, we need to go ahead and create a render target. RT shadow RT RT color shadow color shadow okay and in our scene we're gonna go to our color capture and set our texture target to RT colored shadow. And you can see we already have this looking good. Next, we need a um, decal material. So we're going to create another material. We're going to call this M shadow decal. Colored decal. Set this to deferred decal, translucent. We're going to grab our render target. For now, we're just going to plug that into the base color. And we're going to go to our projection and assign the um, decal material. And immediately, things are going to look pretty weird. But we can go ahead and fix that now. So there's a couple of things we need to do. First, in our projection, uh, we are going to go ahead and scale it up along the um, x-axis, which will give us just a bit of a longer push. And then we're going to maybe realign it there. And then uh, now we can see our image, but you'll see that it's rotated in the wrong orientation. So let's go ahead and rotate this. 90 degrees. There we go. Compile that and save. Uh, so now we need to make some adjustments to our capture. So first, um, if we're trying to imitate a sun shadow, we need an orthographic perspective, not a. Uh, well, we need it to be orthographic, not perspective, since the rays of the sun are all parallel in the case of um, game development. So, uh, you know, we need to match that. Basically, you need to think of the camera as viewing this object from the sun's perspective. And uh, that's how it's going to align with the shadows. And in fact, if we go into our colored glass material and we go to cast Dynamic Shadows is masked. We 
and then we just give this opacity of 5. You can see here uh, is the actual sun shadow. So what we can do, just for the time being, we're going to go ahead and go grab BP Sun, which is just my sun blueprint. We're going to copy its rotation, and we're going to go to our colored shadow and give it the same rotation. And what you'll find, as you can see here, now the shadow of our um, mesh perfectly matches the shadow of the translucent color that we're passing to it. But um, things are pretty ugly. So there's still a couple of changes we want to make. First thing that we're going to do is be a little less wasteful with our scene capture. As it currently stands, uh, we have this render target, but you'll see that you know with a 256 resolution, our object is you know only taking up a tiny amount of the screen space. So let's go ahead and go to our color capture, and we're just going to reduce the ortho width until uh, let's go with 140 for now until it takes up basically. Uh, as much of the screen as it can without getting any um, any clipping off the edge, right? We want to make sure that as it rotates, it always stays in view, but um, we don't want you know, the corners to to go off and let's go ahead and um, now, since we went with 140, we just need to do some quick math here. So uh, it was originally 512 divided by 140 gives us 3.657. Our decal, if we divide by the same factor, we're going to get 0 0.2, um, point, 0 0.273. We'll go with that. So we need to scale our um, decal down by the same amount. Great timing. Okay, um, so let's go ahead and apply the scale. You can see that turns out nice. And now our shadow is looking much higher resolution. Let's get rid of cast dynamic shadows mask for now. And now we're in better shape. So there's still some problems here. Uh, you'll see that, of course, it's capturing our shadow, but it's also capturing the scene and darkening it, which we don't want. Um, so we're going to go ahead and actually I applied this to the wrong thing. Let's apply it just to the decal. There we go. Um, Let's go ahead and go into our color capture. And we're going to set its primitive mode to use show only list for now. And then we're going to go to add an element to the show only list. And we're going to select just our plane. And then we're going to remove the atmosphere. And now we have our uh, plane looking good. And then for our decal, let's go ahead and just punch this into the um, emissive. Now we have something that's starting to look like a translucent shadow. Um, it's not quite right. If we um, were to look back at our reference, uh, you, you can see obviously that the um, output color of our glass is not the same as our um, is the you know the shadow is not the same color as the glass is too bright. Uh, so for now, let's go ahead and just divide that down. for now. Um, there's going to be a lot of tweaks that we'll be making here, but 
ultimately now you can see that we are getting what appears to be a colored translucent shadow. A good start. Um, and in its most basic form, this is really all there is to it. And for a lot of people, this is going to be uh, pretty close to good enough. Um, I'm going to make a couple of quick tweaks before moving on. Uh, so I want to show you first. Uh, so we're going to grab a spiral blur. So what you'll find here is that, um, you know, we do get a lot of jaggedness from our texture because um, you know, our capture resolution is relatively low, but we can uh, pretty easily get around that by uh, just using a spiral blur, for example. Um, let's see. It's going to be T. Shadow. Just a really tiny amount of blur on this for now. It's good. And that gets rid of our jagged edges. And yeah, so we're off to a good start here. Uh, but there are some limitations and issues. For one, again, we're still not at a particularly close match for our uh, our image. And you know, we can continue to tweak our decals and whatnot, but uh, it'll never really be quite right when it's set up this way. So we need to make some changes to, um, to get a better look. But also, as it currently stands, there's no occlusion. Um, so if we were to put our sphere in, for example, just to try to block the shadow, you'll see that the whole sphere is glowing and the shadow of the sphere is glowing. And let's... Um, Uh, go ahead and bring it to our shadow caster so we can um, move them around together. Right, but um, yeah, so we, obviously we need to fix this and we need to improve the result. For a lot of people, you may actually be able to get by just, you know, with simple scenes, if you just want a little bit of color from your shadow, um, you, you know, if you're translucent objects and you're not looking for um, the most accuracy, uh, you could probably call it quits here, you know, just tweak the emissive, get the color right, and, uh, you know, and get what you need out of your scene. But if you want to fix these issues, stick with me in uh, part two, and we will keep working on this material. But for now, that's all.